Hi, I'm Guy McLean. I'm the director of the Westfield Athenaeum, and we're really excited uh, to be able to uh, introduce a wonderful Western Massachusetts artist, Ruth Kerr, uh, to the Westfield community. Uh, she, uh, her work uh, that we see here uh, is uh, our latest exhibit here at the Athenaeum, and we're very excited to show a variety of her paintings uh, here. This exhibit is titled Golden Rain, a Feminist Sensibility in an Age of Eclecticism. And this exhibit is, is sponsored by Westfield Gas and Electric and Whip City Fiber. We're, we're in the uh, latest exhibit that we've done here at the Westfield Athenaeum. Uh, this is an exhibit of the art of Ruth Kerr. Uh, the name of this exhibit is called Golden Rain, a Feminist Sensibility uh, in an Eclectic Age and her art is very eclectic, uh, to say the least. Uh, she also explores a variety of themes that we'll talk about, but before we talk about the subject matter of her paintings, I thought it'd be interesting to talk about her style of art. Um, she comes out of uh, a modernist sensibility. She was deeply influenced in her early years uh, by abstract expressionism. Abstract expressionism was a movement that, that um, uh, burst on the scene in the 1940s and 1950s in New York City. Uh, artists like Jackson Pollock, William de Coudy, Mark Rothko were artists of that time period. She was influenced by some of the women artists who came, who came to prominence during that mo movement. Helen Frankenthaler, Joan Mitchell, and Grace Hardigan. In fact, she found a magazine, she was living in the Midwest at that time, she found a magazine article that covered the story of those three artists, and she was inspired by what they had done. The characteristics of abstract expressionism were very, uh, uh, very apparent in her art. A lot of, you can see a lot of flowing, letting the canvas, uh, letting paint run down the canvas, uh, splattering paint. Uh, there's an improvisational quality to abstract expressionism that you see in her paint. But the abstract expressionists at that time period were uh, pure abstractionists. Whereas Ruth Kerr uh, is not, does not do pure abstraction. There are usually figures or objects in her paintings, and we'll talk about why in just a minute. But stylistically, uh, as she evolved, she also incorporated the neo-expressionism of the 1980s, and also German expressionism. Artists like Anselm Kiefer and Gerhard Richter were influences on her, and those two artists are still active today. So she has combined several different styles, but then brought her own sense of, her own style has kind of evolved out of the inspiration of abstract expressionism, neo-expressionism, and German expressionism. And this painting is a great example. You can see how the, the painting is loosely applied. Many times she'll splatter the canvas. She'll sometimes do a conventional brush on, on the canvas, but at other times, She'll splatter the paint, she'll use sponges to spread the, the, the paint on the canvas. She uses a variety of techniques, uh, and this is a good example of her using that. Um, so that gives you a sense of the style of her paintings. Uh, the subject matter is especially interesting with her work. Uh, she is very concerned about women's issues today. And, but how do, how do you go about expressing those ideas through art? She felt that the visual medium of art was a good way of exploring some of the themes that women face today. Uh, and she found a very uh, kind of interesting, unique way of approaching that. She thought that going back to Greek myths and looking for great uh, stories uh, that, have, that have evolved over the, uh, over the years in Greek culture, in ancient times, and bringing those stories to the modern day would be a very good way of, of um, uh, exploring women's issues today. So, for example, she uses the story Danae and the Golden Rain, a very uh, well-known story from Greek culture. And this is a story that many other artists have used. Artists from the Renaissance to the present day have painted uh, uh, paintings based on the story of Danae and the Golden Rain. Titian, uh, painted a very famous uh, uh, Danae and the Golden Rain painting in the 1500s. Gustav Klimt in the early 20th century in Vienna uh, also did a very famous Danae and the Golden Rain painting. So she took those themes, uh, but also one of the things is 
the, all these artists that have used these things before have been male artists. She wanted to take the sto these stories and turn them over and look at it from a female perspective. So in order to give you some sense, Danae the Golden Rain is a story of a king who did not have any male heirs. And so he went to the oracle, and the oracle said, no, I'm sorry, you're not going to have a male heir, but your daughter will have a son. The only problem is he will grow up and he will kill you when he grows up. The king was very upset about that, so he thought, okay, I can fix this problem. I will lock my daughter up in a, in a tower. So he locked her in, in a tower, but this tower had a skylight at the top of it. Well, Zeus, uh, being very upset that this king would try to change fate, sent down his sperm in the, in the form of golden rain through the skylight, impregnated Danae. Uh, her son, she had a son, the son grew up and, yes, killed the king. Uh, so this story has always been given from a male perspective. What, was, what were the motivations behind the king? Why did Zeus do the things he did? But nobody talks about Danae's feelings about this. Did Danae want to be impregnated? How did she feel about her father's actions? These are stories that, that Ruth Kerr, in these paintings, tries to uh, a, a address and use that story as a way of looking at uh, male-dominated culture today. And this is a perfect example of this. This is called Golden Rain Blue. It has a, a figure in the middle here. You can see the shape of the head and the torso coming down right in this area here. Uh, but what's a, little, what's a little harder to see is the second figure. There's a figure laying down right here. You can see the head here, the shoulders, the torso body, and the legs going uh, uh, into this part. So he has male looming figure over a female figure that's laying down. This is Danae, and this male figure is potentially a variety of things. Zeus, the king, her father, or other male figures. The golden rain is coming down here and coming down on Danae uh, here. So you can see the structure of, of this painting. We'll, let's look at another example now. This painting here is called Golden Rain, number 13. Uh, this painting is very interesting. It's a variation off this, very different uh, in, in approach uh, to the painting we just saw. Um, you can see a female, a nude female figure right here. You can see the head right here, the shoulders, and then the hips coming down right in this area right here. And you can see the golden rain streaming down on Danae. This dark area here is a looming male figure. And take note that the male figure is faced away from the female figure. The male figure is much larger than the female figure. And the male figure is turned away uh, from the female figure. And so the visitor, the, the viewer of this painting is, is invited to interpret why this male figure is looming over the female figure but also turning away uh, from the female figure. Uh, I think this is one of her most interesting paintings, uh, an example of Danae in the Golden Rain. Let's move to another painting now. This, is a, this painting here is Perseus and Andromeda, another story uh, that um, uh, Ruth Kerr uses in her paintings. Uh, Andromeda was, uh, was uh, chained to a rock, but, and Perseus is, is the person who came and rescued her from the rock and saved her from the sea monster that was about to devour her. Ruth Kerr felt uh, that, that this is a constant theme in so many stories in Western culture, from the Greek myths all the way up to the present day. Males are always rescuing females. Uh, and so she takes the story of Andromeda and Perseus, a, a very a classic male for, uh, rescuing a female story, and puts it in a little different light. She has the golden rain element from Danae, but she uses it in this case uh, with Perseus and Andromeda because Perseus after he rescues Andromeda, falls in love with her. And so here, you have a, the female figure here, you have the male, the darker male figure behind, but in this case, 
they're together. They're almost like a, as, like a couple. Um, and the, the golden rain is coming down on both of the figures. So here, she's doing an interesting thing. She's mixing two Greek myth stories in order to get a, a, across a point uh, uh, about a male-dominant culture and also a story that runs through so many of our uh, novels, short stories, poems in Western culture, that of the male rescuing the female. Let's move to another painting now. This is another painting that really illustrates what Ruth Kerr explores in her art. But in this case, uh, she's on the borderline of abstraction here. Uh, many of her paintings uh, have to be looked at very closely to identify the figures. So the paintings are almost abstract, but not quite. And this is a great example of that. You have this kind of explosive middle area here. And it, uh, each viewer is invited to interpret this kind of explosive element here. She also built, to make, to make it even have more of an impact, she builds up this section of the canvas with a lot of texture. There's, um, there's a lot of like bubbly and, 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 and uh, materials in the paint that she's embedded in the paint. Uh, and, and that's surrounded by areas, uh, other areas of the painting are painted with a very loose, very light paint uh, with no uh, texture in it. But during, in this middle kind of explosive area, there's a lot of texture in there. And here is the golden rain streaming down. But we can't find a figure. There's no figure in this painting. Here, she's really at the, at the edge of abstraction. In fact, it could be seen as an abstract painting. The only reason we can't classify it as a pure abstract painting is because we definitely know the element of the golden rain coming down. And this element could be interpreted as an explosive element or bushes, vegetation of some kind. She leaves that open for the viewer to interpret. So here, she's the, the, the reason she's not being a, a, as literal as she is in some of the other paintings where you can definitely see figures and you can see the figures with the golden rain coming down. In this case, she leaves, leaves, leaves it much open so that the viewer can interpret this painting uh, from, from their own perspective, their own experience. This is another very interesting painting by Ruth Kerr. Uh, in this case, she doesn't make a reference to a particular Greek myth, uh, but she uses uh, some of the same vocabulary uh, that she's used in her Greek myth paintings uh, in, in this particular work of art. We have this very distinctive uh, uh, male figure on a pedestal. You can see the pedestal here. It's like a Greek statue. It looks just like a Greek statue. And this Greek statue is, uh, uh, dominates the painting. And there's a lot of very wild activity around it. Her, it, it this is a very good example of how she uh, applies abstract expressionist brushstroke styles. You can see how there's, you know, how she splattered paint in this area. You can see like a line where she took the brush and just flung the brush and got this, these interesting effects of, of paint splattering across there, which, which um, gives a sense of motion and movement and activity in the painting. But the, but the dominant element in the painting is the, uh, the man on uh, the pedestal. And she calls this man on a pedestal. And of course, it's a reference to a male-dominated society in which males dominate. And there's one very subtle element here that can be easily be mixed, missed uh, looking at this painting. Here's the man on the pedestal, and here down in the very corner of the painting, almost off the painting, is a woman laying on the ground. We only can see her legs. Uh, so the, the implication is very clear. The, the, um, in a male dominant society, we put men on a pedestal. Women are relegated to a lower position. It's a very, very interesting painting here and how she's used both the painterly elements and the stylistic elements to make a very interesting point today. Let's move to another painting now. This painting is called Golden Rain Number no. 7 and it's part of her series of Golden Rain paintings that we've been discussing. Here again, uh, she uses a lot of the elements of the Danae and the Golden Rain story, but she gives it a little bit different, uh, a little bit different twist here. In this, in this case, we have a female figure here, we have a male figure here, 
and then we have the golden rain coming down primarily on the female figure. Uh, it's a very, this is a very beautiful painting. This is, doesn't have some of the, of the uh, emotional impact of some of the other paintings. And there's an implication in this painting that maybe uh, Danae desired a relationship with, uh, you know, with someone, we don't know who, uh, and that that's the basis, you know, and, that, and that's the nature of her relationship uh, and, and what leads to the birth of her son. We don't know. And this, and this painting shows the range of Ruth Kerr's work. Sometimes the paintings are clearly about how males dominate females, about the experience of females suffering uh, through uh, all kinds of elements, domestic abuse, other, other forms of violence in, in modern day society. But she also has many paintings where uh, the experience is seen in a very positive way. Here is potentially a couple who are in love. We don't, we don't know for sure. Again, she allows a range for the visitor to come in, view the painting, and make up their own uh, uh, mind about it and, and establish their own impression. And there's a range in her art. The series has a range from uh, referencing violence toward women all the way to uh, women experiencing joy and happiness in relationships. In, in this painting, one of my favorites, I love the colors in this, how she mixes colors that you wouldn't normally think to mix, kind of this purple with a red here. She also has, has thrown a little bit of glitter. You can see these patches of glitter on the canvas here. Uh, this painting is called Stream of Tears, and it's a painting where she doesn't reference a particular Greek myth, but she gives you a, a, a sense of female struggle uh, in a male-dominated society. You can see the female figure, there's a head here, and the body is somewhat, is, is kind of angling down. It's almost like she's uh, laying on a recliner of some kind uh, there. And then you can see these dark periods here, it's like the heads of people uh, kind of over her, looking, looking at her. We don't know what to make out of this, and uh, Ruth Kerr leaves this open to the viewer to interpret in a variety of ways. But we have a sense of many paintings, many paintings that males did from the Renaissance through the Baroque all the way up to the modern day, were paintings where women are shown nude, uh, reclining back on a couch or a bed of some kind. It's a very common theme in Western European art. Here she's taken it and given it kind of a foreboding because of the darkness and then also look how she's allowed paint to stream down on the, the canvas and she calls it stream of tears which gives us a hint of where she's going with it. Uh, the stream of tears, the female figure being eroticized, being made uh, a, 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 an object uh, being objectified is certainly what she's exploring in this painting. And here are all these um, uh, heads, uh, the implication being male figures looming over and staring at the female figure that's, a, that's laying here across the canvas. A very, very interesting uh, painting here. Let's move to one other painting. This painting uh, is called A Soul's Facade. Again, she doesn't make a reference in, this, uh, in the title, at least, to a particular Greek myth, but you can, you can definitely see the golden rain coming down here again, and then you just have this one lone figure uh, here in the middle of the canvas, and she leaves this in a very neutral place so that the viewer can come to this painting and make, make, make out what they want to see in this painting. Is she suffering? Uh, and, uh, is she uh, enjoying her experience? Is she in a, a state of ecstasy? We don't know. We leave that up for the viewer to see. And she keeps the figure, as in most of her paintings, she keeps the figure very nebulous in order to allow us to enter to, to almost see, uh, in fact, you could say this about almost all these paintings, she puts us in a dream state. Because of her painterly style, all her paintings tend to send us into some sort of subconscious or dream state in order to explore this theme. Because many times in our dreams is when we connect to our emotional 
of beans uh, in a very meaningful way. And so I think this is a very interesting, this is one of our smaller paintings, but it's one of our very uh, most interesting paintings. I hope you've enjoyed looking at the paintings here and exploring the work of Ruth Kerr uh, in this exhibit. Uh, I think these paintings are uh, in, in, incredibly interesting and provocative works of art. And I hope that uh, you've enjoyed a, a little bit of an exploration uh, of some of the themes that Ruth Kerr explores in her paintings. And I hope you have the opportunity to come in and see this wonderful exhibit. Uh, in addition to the paintings I've talked about in this, there are many, many more uh, to be seen. This is a very large exhibit, and I hope all of you can come in and see uh, this really exciting show uh, here at the Westfield Athenaeum.